on how things work um, so that you hopefully can understand a bit better. Um, so just as an introduction, we for voting, you obviously as a country, so regardless of whether you come from different universities, you're still voting as a country. And you get two votes per country, per country, regardless of how big your country is. So whether you're one person or whether you're 20 people, you still each country still gets two votes. Um, and there are different methods of crossing votes, which I will explain a bit more later. Um, so the Robert Rules of Order new is revised. Um, we're just going to go through what these rules are, and then how to make motions, and then how to um, make secondary motions as well. So voting as a country. Like I said, each country has two votes. So um, the supranational entities, such as IBSA UK and Ireland, and SAVM also counts as that, you still count as a country for the purpose of voting. Um, all the AMOs from a single country must come to an agreement before, between themselves as to how they want to cast their votes. So you will discuss this briefly amongst yourselves, and once you know how you want to vote, then the voting will take place. Um, but you should try to ensure that each MO has an equal say. So if you have different MOs from different local, like different universities, make sure that you take into account all the different opinions. Okay, so you can have, for each country, it's two votes. It can either be for, against, or abstain. So for four, you're going to raise your green cards. Um, for against, you're going to raise your red cards, and if you abstain, you abstain. So an abstain means a non-vote. So the vote is subtracted from the total vote pool, so it does not mean the same as a no vote. I hope everyone understands that, but you'll understand it a bit better. Mm -hmm. So you are allowed to abstain from voting. Um, it can kind of be explained as halfway between for and against, and um, it should be given If you, sorry, I apologize, um, you abstain if you're not sure you know or understand the issue, um, if you feel like you're not qualified enough to give an opinion, or if you don't have any feelings for or against the issue. So whatever's being discussed, if you are completely neutral about it, then you're allowed to abstain. Um, so in the case of voting to elect a person, the votes can be cast either to, I'm sorry, I. Pick this up. So you, you can only um, either vote for a person or you can abstain. You cannot vote against a person. Um, so you can vote for or abstain, not against. Um, so this applies for each of the two votes in the same way as voting for a motion. So you can either pick one person and vote for that person twice. So you're going to put up two. Uh, well, you're going to say you're going to vote for the person once, or you can vote for the person once and abstain, or you can give two abstains. Um, we'll explain this again, but this is the gist of it. Um, so here's just a bit of more of an example. So a country has one MO. There's one, um, one school, one chapter, one local member organization, and they all vote the same. Then you're going to vote, have two votes that is representative of everyone that vote there. So, if everyone votes the same thing, you can all say, okay, we, we all agree on this, we're all going to vote for it, or we all agree to vote against it. If it's a person, we can say we all vote for it, or we all abstain. Um, or if you have more than more than two, or if you have two MOs or more, um, then you can split your votes as well. So you can say, okay, let's say a few of the delegates agree on a matter, and a few of them don't agree, then you can split your votes. So you can say, one vote agrees, one vote doesn't agree. Okay, um, so you're going to each each MO needs to select one person per the GA session to state the votes of your country. It doesn't have to be the same person every time, but the voting has to be done by only one person um, at any point in time. So whatever the voting method used, this person is always the only person for that country to state the vote. So if you need to, for example, voting by card raising, it's just one person holding up both cards, not two people holding up a card each. Okay, um, so when you have any objections, so when the chair thinks the results will likely be obvious, so if the chair asks this and everyone is silent, then the motion passes. So the chair will ask and if no one says anything, um, then the motion automatically passes. 
If you feel like you do not agree with that motion, you're allowed to get up and say, I object. So that would mean then you go to a vote, straight to a vote. Um, no more discussion, discussion ends. Um, but that would be minimal voting time will be allowed. So you'll quickly get to discuss and sort everything out. And then um, you go straight to the vote. If you need more time to think about it, you need to tell the chair because the chair is going to go straight to the vote. Um, so for card raising votes. So there might be some divided opinion on a motion. So if within your national MO, um, a two thirds majority is required. Sorry. Once again, my fault. Um, in general, a two-thirds majority is required for a, a motion to pass. Um, if any member falls for it, the chair may move to a card raising vote, as I explained earlier. So if someone objects or you uh, would like to move to a previous question, is what we would say, then you go straight to a card raising vote. Um, so when the chair asks for those in favor, the person in responsible for casting the vote will raise one green per one green card per vote in favor, and you have two maximum of two votes in favor. So in other words, if you have a um, you you want to vote for you know four for both of your votes, then you put up two green cards. If you want to vote just one four, then you only put up one green card. Um, when the chair asks for those opposed, then the person responsible raises one red card vote per against. So if you want to vote just one one for and one against, then you're going to raise one green card and one red card. If you want to vote two against, you raise two red cards. Um, so you're not allowed to cast more than two votes in total. And any votes not cast shall be counted as abstained. So if someone does not agree with the chair's ruling, they can order a count on the roll call vote. Um, and either of these require a second. So, um, for example, if we raise the cards and you don't think that the chair counts it correctly, you are allowed to ask for a roll call vote, and in that case, we will call each MO up individually and they will cast their votes. Um, so, roll call votes, the secretary to the GA shall call out the names of the voting entities present. One delegate per country state their country's votes when asked. Um, so the voting method, are there any objections? You say nothing if you agree with the motion. So if he asks, if the chair asks, are there objections, then you, and you keep quiet, then we will assume that there are no objections. Um, a card raising vote is the other option. So you raise your green cards in favor, raise your red cards against. And the roll call vote is you set your votes out loud when your country is Do you guys have any questions on voting? Okay. Um, so the Roberts Rules of Order is up next. Um, Roberts Rules of Order is newly revised. Um, so it's a set of rules for con for the conduct at meeting. It's orderly, efficient, and fairly widely widely used. So um, it's just a way of keeping order within the General Assembly, and we use it within IBSA, um, where these rules do not conflict our Constitution and bylaws. So, under no circumstances should undue strictness be allowed to intimidate members or limit full participation. Um, don't be afraid to stand up, obtain the floor, and speak if you have a question, even if you don't know if it's a point of privilege, point of information, point of order, or parliamentary inquiry. I'll explain those soon. Um, so, please be, a, be like comfortable to get up, speak, state your opinion. Um, we're all here to hear what we all think. Um, but however, you have to behave according to the Roberts Rules of Order and you have to listen to the Chair's instructions. So motions. Um, only voting delegates may make motions or vote on motions. So hand up, uh, wait for the Chair to acknowledge you. Then you stand up, you state your name and your voting entity. So I would, for example, state, Martha Yanash, I will say Expo. Um, so you introduce yourself first. Then you say, I move that, and precisely word your motion. So you need to exactly word it, word it exactly the way you want to say it um, for the minute's sake. The motion must be seconded, so someone then has to shout out second. Um, you don't then have to say your name, but if you second a motion, just say second. Um, then it's open for discussion, so the mover has the first priority. So whoever moved the motion or made, made the motion, that person can speak first. Nobody can speak twice to the same issue. 
until everyone else wishing to speak has spoken at least once. So the chair is not going to give you a second chance to speak if you've already spoken, and there are still other people who want to speak who has never spoken before. Um, so we no further debate. The chair asks the question, and we go to the second. All right, some considerations. Just remarks must be relevant and debate the motion, not the person. So no personal, you know, talk to. Avoid using, try to avoid using personal names, people's names, and always speak to the chair. So you always address the chair. You don't address the um, general assembly. You don't address the, the people sitting, you know, in the crowds. <laughs> um, so you speak directly to the chair. Then secondary motions. So it can be other motions that relate to or interrupt the main motion. Um, so you can make a motion within a motion to, to a sense. Um, so there are three things that you can use in here. There's a point of privilege. So a point of privilege is related to noise, personal comfort. You can't, so I can't get a speaker, the room is too warm, um, it's too noisy outside, anything like that. You put up your hand and you say, point of privilege and then you say what you want to say. Um, you can also use a point of information. So information required regarding the facts affecting the motion. So it's a question for the speaker. You don't say point of information and then give information. So a point of information is literally a question. I would like to ask a question to the speaker um, concerning whatever you're talking about. So it's asking the question, it's not giving information. Then point of order is if the rules are not being followed, you state this immediately. So you're going to get a little card that we're going to hand out soon. Um, there are three cards, a yellow, a blue, and an orange card. You will also see these descriptions will be in your General Assembly booklet. Have they received, oh, that you're going to be receiving it now. Um, so the yellow card is if you want the person to slow down. So whoever is speaking, if you raise your yellow card, then it's to show that the person is speaking too fast. You can't follow. The blue is if you want the chair to summarize the point. So if you're a little bit confused and you don't understand, you put up your blue card and the chair will see it and then summarize whatever we're speaking about. And then orange if you want the person to speak louder. Okay, um, then we also get a parliamentary inquiry. So if you want to ask a question about the rules and how they're being followed, so is it is it in order to make a motion to postpone this until later? For example, so if there's anything that's got a bit of discrepancy within the um, discussion currently happening, then you're allowed to make a parliamentary inquiry and we will then address that. So it's used for clarifications of the Constitution and bylaws. Um, then you can also amend a motion, is to change the wording of the motion, and then it's voted on. So you can make a friendly amendment, as long as the friendly amendment doesn't change the meaning. So that would be, for example, punctuation or anything like that. Um, a motion can also be withdrawn. So once it's, open, once it's open for discussion, and the GA must give permission for withdrawal of a motion. Um, you can then say, I move to previous question. If you say, move to previous question, it completely, entirely closes the debate and you immediately go to a um, vote and it requires a two-third majority. Otherwise, the, continue, the discussion can continue. Um, there are lots more possible <laughs> secondary motions. Um, you'll understand them later. So, in summary, two votes per country, one person per GA session selected to show them. Each MO have, should have a fair say. Abstain does not mean no, it means the vote, vote is not cast. There are different methods of voting. We use Robert's Rules of Order to try and make meetings fair and efficient. And various secondary motions are possible, so you can just look at your handouts that you're going to be getting for more information. So remember, stand up, state your name and your voting entity. Um, don't be afraid to stand up, obtain the floor and speak if you have a question or if you have anything to add. Um, I would now suggest that uh, the chair entertains a motion that... Uh, um, the chair would like to call the GA to order at... Hmm? At 1.48 South Korea time. 
Okay, and then I would, the chair would like to entertain a motion that observers to the General Assembly should be granted the right of speech for the remainder of this Congress. <coughs> Daniel Dunn, IBSA, XCO, ISO move. Second. Are there any objections? <laughs> Hearing none, the motion is passed. Okay, so other important things, please read the Expo Secretary the proceedings booklet as we will be voting on and approving them um, later in the GA. Um, we've sent out two emails with documents and links. You can find all those documents um, and information that's been discussed during the GA in those emails as well as in your chair booklet. So you should be able to access it pretty easily. All right, on to our um, first agenda item is roll call for all member organizations. So I will be handing over to Jackie, our Secretary General for the roll call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna call out all of the MO, but I need you to sign up one person per country, not per MO, to come get a GA booklet and your card. One per country. But when I call your MO, say here, if you're here. You're not here. Don't say anything. <laughs> I'm gonna say Algeria, Algeria. I'm gonna say Algeria, Ghana. I'm gonna say Austria. I'm gonna say Belgium again. I'm gonna say China. I'm gonna say Croatia. I'm gonna say Czech Republic. I'm gonna say Denmark. I can say Egypt. I can say Estonia. I can say Finland. I can say France. I can say Germany. I can say Ghana, Kumasi. I can say Greece, Thessaloniki. I can say Greece, Thessaloniki. I can say Hungary. I can say Indonesia. I can say Iran, Dubai. I can say Iran, Suleimani. I can say Italy, Bologna. I can say Italy, Milan. I can say Italy, Naples. I can say Italy, Iran. I can say Japan. I can say Kenya. I can say Kosovo. I can say Malaysia, Swanta. I can say Malaysia, Zanzibar. I can say Morocco. I can say Namibia. I can say Nepal. I can say the Netherlands. I can say Nigeria. I can say Norway. I can say the Philippines. I can say Poland, Poland, Krakow. I can say Poland, Lublin. I can say Poland, Olsen. I can say Poland, Poznan. I can say Poland, Warsaw. I can say Poland. I can say Portugal. I can say Romania to I can say Romania to Please remember to say here loudly and clearly if you if you are here. And please stop talking if you're not saying here. I can say Romania to Mosor. I can say Russia to St. Petersburg. I can say Zama. I can say Serbia to Belgrade. I can say Slovakia. I can say Slovenia. I can say South Africa. I can say South Korea. I can say Spain, Barcelona. 
Agente Spain, Darzoga. Agente Sweden. Agente Switzerland, Burn. Here. Agente Switzerland, Zur. Here. Agente Taiwan. Here. Agente Thailand. Yeah. Agente Tunisia. Here. Yeah. Agente Turkey, Ankara. Agente Turkey, Aden. Agente Turkey, Bursa. Agente Turkey, Istanbul. Agente Turkey, Konya. Agente Turkey, Samson. Agente Uganda. Agente UK and Ireland. Here. Agente Zambia. Agente Zimbabwe. And now for the candidate on those. Agente Algeria, Blida. Agente Australia, Murdoch. Agente Australia, South Australia. Agente Bangladesh. Agente Brazil, Belém. Agente Bulgaria, Sofia. Agente Cameroon. Agente Chile, Santiago. Agente Colombia. Agente Ghana, Tomkamali. Agente Iraq, Kirkuk. Agente Agente Chile, Camerino. Agente Latvia. Agente Libya, Tripoli. Agente Macedonia. Agente Mongolia. Agente Paraguay, San Lorenzo. Agente Peru. Agente Romania, Lassi. Here, this question. It's with I, not with L. Yeah, okay. Agente Turkey, Afghan. Agente Turkey, Burton. Agente Turkey, Elabit. Agente Turkey, Erzurum. Agente Turkey, Kayseri. Agente Ukraine. We have reached quorum at 55%. All right, next up is our elections of, is the election of the election committee. Um, are there any nominations for the election committee? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, the committee shall consist of three people, of whom at least one must be a former or current member of, member of the Expo. The election committee shall be elected by the General Assembly. You cannot nominate or be nominated if you are part of the election committee. Um, the tasks of the election committee is to collect nominee forms, hang them up, print the voting ballots, collect the votes, count the votes, and oversee presentations, etc. So they're in charge of running everything with regards to the elections. Um, <laughs> are there any nominations for the election committee? Okay. Just speak, try to speak loudly and see if it works. Kate Hartzler, IDSA SAFMA. I would like to nominate Abigail Blanton of IDSA UK and Ireland to the election committee. Abigail, do you accept? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for the election committee? Harry. Harry Taylor, I would say staff, and I'll name Daniel Blunt. I would say Expo. Daniel, do you accept? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more nominations? Okay. I know all of the IBS Estonia, and I nominate Eva Arasma, IBS Estonia. Uh, do you accept? Yes. Congrats. Alright, so the election of the chair. I'm oh, sorry, I don't usually do this. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for the election committee? No, seeing none, then the nominations are now closed. Thank you. Congratulations to those three elected. <laughs> Now we can move on to the election of the chairman. Uh, do, are there any nominations for the chairperson? <laughs> okay, I apologise. Before I open the nominations, um, according to the IBSA bylaws, 
A chairman shall be elected at the beginning of the General Assembly. The chairman shall be responsible for maintaining order in the General Assembly according to Robert's rules of order newly revised. The chairman has no votes. Um, he or she must have a great understanding of the ISA constitution, bylaws, and manuals. They, he or she must have a great understanding of the ISA structure as well as a great understanding of Robert's rules of order. Not yet. All right. <laughs> now, do I have any nominations for the chair? Yes. Nope. Uh, Rathmus from IGSA Denmark. I nominate uh, Harry Taylor from IGSA Sauron, the chairman of the General Assembly. Harry, do you have a Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for chairman? Seeing no other nominations, the nominations are now closed. Congratulations, Terry. Let's do this. Okay, so we're going to continue on to the next point, which is the election of the parliamentarian. So the, the General Assembly shall appoint a parliamentarian to the direction of the GA. The parliamentarian is responsible for ensuring that the GA is run according to the Constitution and bylaws. And the parliamentarian can be called upon by any, any of you in the GA if you want to clarify if something is correct according to our Constitution and bylaws. The parliamentarian shall refrain from making motions and participating in debate as much as is reasonably possible is allowed to speak. Um, and the parliamentarian shall retain the right to vote. The par parliamentarian should have a good understanding of IVSA's constitution, bylaws, and manuals, and be familiar with the officer's work. Are there any nominations for parliamentarians? Yes. Lynn Mamona, IVSA Hungary. I nominate Edmund Ollenburg, IVSA Benellas, for parliamentarian. Alan, do you accept? Yes. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for Parliament here? Seeing none, nominations are closed, and Ellen, if you are parliamentarian, please come to the front. the agenda is amendments to an approval of the proposed agenda for this GA. Are there any amendments to the proposed agenda? Mary. Uh, I, move, I move to move the past 30 days by my presentation for IE. Uh, Are you sure it's not point 31? I'm sorry, 31. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Is there any discussion on removing point 31 from the agenda? Are there any objections to approving the motion to remove point 31 away from the presentation from the agenda? Hearing none, the motion passes. <laughs> Are there any other amendments to the proposed agenda? Seeing none, on to the next thing. Now we will talk about approval of the minutes from the 67th IBSA Congress in Krakow. You should have received them in an email from the Secretary General a while ago. Are there any Amendments to the minutes from the 67th IBSA Congress in Krakow. Nina Miller, I move to amend two points in the minutes. Um, point one is under five. It says um, the, oh, on the point five, replace Terry Fowler, better move with Nina Schmidt. <laughs> New Perry, where that from Jeremy And um, then I'm point 51 to replace the yeah, and, and if you can only make one point at a time. So that's your 
Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? To be clear, the motion was to amend point five of the minutes. So instead of saying Perry Taylor, are there any objections to approving that amendment? Hearing none, that motion passes. Is there anyone else who has an amendment to the minutes? Um, I move to replace uh, Vera Gonzalez, Alice uh, Spain, with Vera Gonzalez, Alice Spain, uh, Alice Spain uh, comma Barcelona, and Alice X official in uh, all instances. Is there a second? Is there any discussion on that amendment to the minutes? Are there any objections to approving that motion? Hearing none, approved. Any other amendments to the minutes? Delma. Delma Massa, IBS in Malaysia for point 36, 39, and 48. It's not stated if the nominee is accepted. So I move to add that they accepted the nomination and it was passed. Can you just make your motion at the explaining as well? Okay, I move to add the word accepted to point 36, 39, and 48. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? This would be where you could explain if you wanted to explain. Just for the future. Is there any other discussion? Okay, are there any objections to approving that amendment to the minutes? Hearing none, approved. Would anyone else like to amend the minutes from the right now? Yes. Irani Lorenzo, I will say no. Uh, to um, replace all instances, um, uh, Lisa Buren Scobi with Lisa Buren, I will say the Netherlands and Cheryl Scobi. Okay. Is there any discussion on that amendment to the minutes? Are there any objections to approving that motion? Hearing none, motion passes. Ooh, amazing. Okay. Any any other amendments to the minutes? Yes. Never Poland, IDSC Krakow. Uh, I want to replace all instances of IDSC Netherlands with IDSC Netherlands. Second. 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 Is there any discussion on the motion to replace Netherlands with the Netherlands? Are there any objections to that motion? Motion passes. Okay. Next. <coughs> Vincenzo, yeah. Vincenzo Gallery is in a possible. I move to change at point 44 Magdalena Janusz with the proper air proper So what? And H. 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 Yeah, you should put an A. <laughs> okay. Is there any discussion on spelling Marta's name correctly? <laughs> okay, any objections to spelling Marta's name correctly? <laughs> Hearing none, we will spell our name correctly. Okay. Any more amendments to the minutes? Lydia? Yes, I would say Krakow, Poland. Um, on the first page, third paragraph, uh, I think we replace Brandon Nettles, interim president and external relations officer, move to allow generally assembly the right to speak with Brandon Nettles, interim president and external relations officer, <laughs> move to allow observers to the general assembly the right to speak. 
there a second? Okay, I heard a second. Is there any discussion? Lydia. I should explain right yes. It says move to allow general assembly, but it's supposed to be moved to allow observers to the general assembly. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Okay. Any objections to approving that amendment to the Senate? Hearing none, also approved. Anyone else have amendments to the minutes who hasn't already spoken? No? Okay, it's done. The Amasa Aviasi Malaysia for point 53, I move to replace the last line that says the budget was approved by the GA for 2018-2019 to the budget for 2018-2019 was approved by the GA. Second. Is there any discussion on that amendment to the minutes? So, if you read it in the original, it just sounds like the budget was approved by the GA of 2018 to 2019, but the GA approved the budget for the year, not the GA of the year. So, it makes more sense this way. Any other discussion on the event? Are there any objections to that motion? Hearing none, pass. Anybody else? Oh, wait, are you hand up? Andre? Okay, Andre. Andre, to myself, I'm going to say, I know to replace my name from <laughs> Andre Firmanisa to Andre Firmanisa in point 57. So, <laughs> okay, any discussion? No? Any objections? Also, no? Pass. Now, who can speak? Here at the end, so I will say we are easily. Uh, in point 12.1, uh, I will shine with every shine, which is spelled S C H E I N. Any objections to that motion? Hearing none, motion passes. Are there any other amendments to the minutes from Krakow? Chairman John, I guess it's after we are to move. Uh, six, number 60, second paragraph, there's for the order. Um, I move that we move order from second paragraph. There's a five for, uh, oh, you, can, you can't explain. Oh, just okay, make, just okay. move that and remove order for the second paragraph of number 60. Okay. Second. Now there, you can discuss. Something. Yeah, because it yeah. says, uh, I disagree for the order position. So it says we're going to Is there any other discussion on that motion? Are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none passed. Any other amendments to the minutes in Krakow? Any other? I'm going to add I move to under point 51 replace Daniel Lund with Daniel Lund. <laughs> Any discussion on spelling names incorrectly? Are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none, pass. Any other amendments to the minutes from Krakow? Delma, is that a hand or are you scratching your head? Okay, Delma. <laughs> And I'm going to start this simulation for point 80. Uh, just remove to replace the word R. No, hold on. I know the correction. I just Okay. Uh, I move to change IDS is staying are now allowed to vote to IDS is staying was now allowed to vote. There we go. You guys are getting it. Is there any discussion on that? It's just tense. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? 
Are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none, motion passes. Any other amendments to the minutes? It says the GA were out of order. I move to replace were with was. <laughs> and uh, hold on, there's one more. In the same point. Uh, <coughs> okay, at one point it says, so he, blah, 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 was not allowed to vote. I move to change that to were not allowed to vote. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> and grammar. Jackie, are you getting all of these? Oh, I am. <laughs> uh, is there any other discussion on the grammar? Uh, point 43. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your last one still. Okay, is there any objections to approving that motion? Hearing none passed. Are there any other amendments to the minutes? Delma? Are you asked? Do I promise? Um, in point 80, it, um, it four paragraphs. Brandon Nettles uh, announced Giorgio from IDSC Greece that should start on a fresh paragraph because it's a fresh nomination. So I move to just like enter the fresh paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none pass. Any other amendments? Lisa. Uh, Lisa Bureau, Wait for a microphone. Wait for a microphone. No, Mr. Bureau, I have the elements. Uh, I'm going to add periods to the title of page 43, which says very good of call GA to recess. Uh, to finish the sentence. Second. <laughs> Any discussion on that motion to add a period? Any objection to adding a period? Hearing none passed. Any other amendments to the minutes? Dalla Mazda IBS in Malaysia point forty three. I move to delete the word IBS in Croatia have proposed and just let it be IBS in Croatia proposed. Okay, any discussion on that one? Okay. Any objections to the motion? Hearing none passed. Are there any other amendments to the minutes from Crack House? <laughs> so the chair will now entertain a motion to approve the minutes as we revised them from Crack House. Daniel on I will say extra awesome. You have to wait to be recognized by the chair. Any discussion on approval of the event? Any objections to approving the minutes from Carmel? None passed. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. So we're going to now do nominations for presidents. These nominations will be open until GA3 with presentations by the nominees in GA4 and elections in GA6. The chair will now accept nominations for president elect. Are there any nominations? Hey. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, seeing none, nominations are closed. They will be open again in GA2. Now we're going to do nominations for Congress one and a half years away. These nominations are open until GA3, so they'll be open again to GA2 if you don't want to. Um, are there any nominations for Congress one and a half years away? Stare you down. <laughs> 
Seeing none, nominations are closed. They'll be open again in GA2. Now, nominations for symptoms in two years away. These are open throughout GA here in South Korea, and also nominations will be accepted in Croatia. The chair will now accept nominations for symposium two years away. Are there any nominations? Seeing none. Nominations are closed. They'll be open again in GA2. And now, the presentation of the eight. I just say excellence award yeah. by our own. Okay, so <laughs> Congress and the radio. Um we collect them in oh yeah. Sorry, there you go. Um yeah, we accept nominations from any IBSA member uh, for their fellow colleagues if they feel that they should be recognised for their work. Um, so any member that they think is excelled at his or her job and has gone beyond, beyond no, above and beyond. Um, nominations are sent to EXCO um, and we have selected a member out of the 22 nominations that we received this time round. So can I have a drum roll please? Um, who's the president of the Prime Minister, a lot to the veterinary welfare um, in Ibis State of Hall, and he's uh, created multiple campaigns such as the Animal Health Camp, Awareness Program, uh, quizzes, and he's really brought the Ibis State of Hall um, chapter forward. And he's also a Best Ex Ambassador, and he's also established two new MOs in Nepal. So, yeah, big congratulations to him, he's worked really hard this year, and we really uh, think he deserves it. Um, there were 22 other um, nominees, and we want to commend them all because to be nominated is still such an amazing feat. Um, they all worked really hard, so yeah, can we have a clap? Let's have an <laughs> cool. And the, uh, the ninth excellence award will be um, open for nominations before um, Croatia Congress. So, drive for that if you think you know someone who um, says it. Now the presentation of IGSA activities, starting with the development aid director. Can someone find Charlotte? Oh, there you are. Charlotte, I'm So hi guys, again I'm Charlotte, the Development A Director. Um, so uh, the Development A Director is mainly in charge of the Development Fund, uh, which is um, to invest in good causes like scholarships for students or other projects. So I'm going to take you through what we've been now doing uh, the, half, the past half year. Um, so first of all, the IPSA scholarship grant, um, it's a scholarship given away to students twice a year. Um, this year we will choose three students uh, per application round. Um, so we have uh, now, we're now reviewing the applications that were uh, sent in before the 20th of November. And um, first of all, I would like to thank all the applicants for all the motivating um, letters that they wrote and the hard work that they put into it. Um, we're planning to present the winners on the 3rd of um, February. Um, so uh, if you have applied, uh, keep close watch on our Facebook site. Um, and then the next IPSA scholarship round, the application round, will open in March. So if you have missed the past one, I would definitely recommend to fill in the applications uh, because you can get a chance to win 1,000 euros to go to an externship or an internship of your choosing. 
Um, it is meant for students that are not able to afford or go to places that they would like to go to. Um, for example, cardiology or other stuff. So yeah, it's a big opportunity. Um, then the next part is the uh, Hills Next Generation Award. Um, it contains one scholarship of 1750 euros. Um, it's uh, intended to enable a student to participate at the SADA Congress, um, which is held from the 16th to the 19th of July in Toronto, Canada. Um, and also the application process for this uh, scholarship round will also open in March. Um, and will be posted on our website and Facebook page as well. Um, so the next part of the development fund um, is the reduced fee spots. Um, so the reduced fee spots is intended for students that do not have the money to go to one of our symposium or congress events. Um, so CROC, the development fund also funds half of the fee of students uh, about it. So um, this year's winner, winners are Yoko and Natasha. Um, so congratulations. I can't see you right now from here, but uh, congratulations for that. And um, I would highly recommend people that are a bit short on cash but still want to go to Congress in Croatia to fill in the motivational form because, well, you could save a lot of money on it if you really need it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to give away more reduced fee spots for the Congress as well. Um, and then you have the membership fee fund. Um, it used to be a um, fund that has been given away yearly by the DAD, but it got a bit lost over the time and I wanted to pick it up again. Um, so, mainly it's set up for starting MOs or MOs that are really struggling financially um, to pay their fees and get members and promote at their own university. So a membership fee fund will be um, held through an application process um, and with that application process we will select three to five MOs depending on the country they are from. Uh, to pay their full membership fee for one whole year. So that those MOs can focus on collecting the members, setting up exchanges and everything else that MOs that do function properly already do. Um, so yeah, that's something new for this year. Um, we're planning to start up applications around March or maybe February already, but I'm not sure. If you have any questions about it or think your MO could apply for this, please uh, contact me and ask me whatever you need to know for it. Um, so then we have a couple of projects that we're running right now. The first one is the Mission Radius project, which is, I think, personally, an amazing project in Kumasi, Ghana. Um, it's in cooperation with the university and I can say Kumasi, Ghana. Um, so what they did um, is that they uh, chose a student to do a survey on the dog population and the knowledge of the locals about mission radius, or uh, radius, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, the development fund funded the survey of the students so that the student was able to uh, collect all the answers, go around in the whole area. Um, so with the data of that survey, um, they will be able to set up a vaccination program and hopefully uh, we can work on these kind of projects again with uh, Mission Radius. Um, also to say that, I don't know if my mouse is there, but this is Prince, my lovely secretary, which was unable to come here unfortunately. But well, a big thank you to him because he personally arranged almost everything for this project for IBC Global. So yeah, he did a really good job. And um, yeah, he's had a lot of nice pictures which made me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so the next part is the Vet Books for Africa project. So Vet Books for Africa 
is one of our partner corporations um, that uh, goes yearly around parts of Africa to deliver equipment and that books that she from. Um, so this year we wanted to have, so we organized the fundraising week between the 19th and the 25th of November. Um, so I would like to get uh, like a big thank you to IBZ Berlin, IBZ Warsaw, IBZ South Africa, IBZ Germany, and IBZ Liverpool for all of their efforts. Together, they managed to collect an amount of 841.26 euro in one week, which is amazing. So, thank you. Um, so, initially, the VF uh, promised to double the amount, uh, but because we were so proud of everyone and we know, knew that that the traffic guy really needed the money. Uh, we decided to donate 3,000 euros um, to sponsor their amazing project um, because they like don't only deliver all these equipments to veterinary faculties, it's also to students who ha don't have the money to buy the books, it's also to sanctuaries, animal rehabilitation centers, and so on. So I made a list of it, but I'm not going to read all of the country, but it's a lot. Um, and in, in return for it, they also promoted IBSA around those countries to make sure that we are able to set up more MOs and people over there know more about IBSA because we're not known a lot over there yet. Um, so hopefully, um, yeah, they, they'll get a bit of the feeling that we have and come to our conferences as well. Um, so the next project is the Philippines Burley project. Um, this project is um, a project that started a couple of years ago. Um, so the DF uh, is going to fund 10,000 euros into surgery equipment to arrange for them to make a uh, surgery room out of their um, anatomy room at this moment. Uh, the university over there is solely depending on their government funds and, um, well, the government isn't very rich, so they don't have the equipment that we, at least uh, the most of us, do have as surgery rooms and stuff. Um, so we're now making up the list of equipment and we're also um, uh, in contact with a company and um, PPMA especially Joy Santos of PPMA. Um, she, PPMA is from the Philippines, so um, she is at this point um, helping us with all the contacts and stuff. So it's, it's really amazing the work that people do over there to make sure this project ha happens. So um, thanks to her as well. Um, then we also have a couple of other smaller projects at this moment. One of them is the Ohio Red Book Ohio State Bed Book Donation, the Henry Schein Microscope Project, and the Pisaga Book Donation, but I, I'm not going to go uh, deep into that part uh, because they're still in, uh, in setup. Um, so then other things that the Development Fund and the DAD team arranged is uh, the IBZ Be Kind Award. So last year, IBZ Lyon uh, won, um, and um, I would like to give a big shout out to you all to share with the hashtag IBSA be kind or be kind IBSA apologies. Um, because we're scoring the system on Facebook and we're scoring how much people uh, share our posts and um, donate money to the development fund and um, you can get a, a really nice uh, in it. So, um, it's a project that we started to get everyone closer together. And, and um, yeah, I would really like to see you all uh, participate in it. Um, so the next project is the Live and Silent Auctions. Uh, the Live and Silent Auctions are going to be held at day five and day seven. Um, it's actually the main fundraising project uh, that fund the development fund and make it possible for us to 
sponsor so many students and other projects over the world. Um, so I would like to thank you all for all the really beautiful stuff that you already delivered. Like, I really appreciate it. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm looking forward to you seeing what other people brought because it's, it's really, really cool. Um, so thank you for you all. So, I'm very happy with what you brought. Um, so definitely be there and uh, I'll spend some money. <laughs> Um, the next part is the Pet PD raffle. I already got a couple of questions about it. Um, so the raffle tickets will be sold at the merchandise tent outside of the lecture room. And uh, they will be sold at the silent auction. At the live auction, um, we will announce the winner. So Pet PD is offering a gift voucher for a one or two day course uh, for one of our delegates. Um, so it's a free space for a chorus of your own choosing, which is kind of amazing. So um, if you want to know more about it, definitely check out their website or um, talk to me about it because it's, it's really cool. So we're going to do a raffle, so it's sort of a lottery. And um, yeah, we'll pick the winner at live auction, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, the second part, I think most of you already saw, is the Merkinized. It's also one of the um, ways we fund the development fund. So um, I want to thank especially Ryan and Ryan from the OC. Yes, I see you. Um, but they arranged all the Merkinized at this symposium for me, so all the things are there for me. So really, really thank you guys. I love it. So definitely check it out if you didn't. Check it out yet because it's got a lot of amazing stuff and I'm already broke. Um, <laughs> so, the last point of my presentation is the Development Fund Scholarship Task Force. Um, Expro decided to make a task force uh, for arranging, scoring, and um, actually everything around the scholarships. Um, so if uh, you're structured, flexible, and very motivated to help other students uh, pursuing their dreams and goals, I would definitely recommend you applying for this. Um, it's opening on the 17th of January, and applications will close within two weeks. Um, we will put on the 17th, we will put something on Facebook so you can all read it as well. Um, and um, yeah. I would, I would say definitely check it out because it's it's I have a really cool team at least I think so and uh, <laughs> we could really use some help with them so yeah that's it thank you for listening. Cool. So um, I will just briefly go through um, what the member um, organizations team has been uh, doing for the past couple of months. Um, but first, I want to introduce my secretaries. I'm lucky enough to have all three of them here. So Ken Ryan, obviously, and the Sandra. They've helped me loads, and they've been a really great team. So we would like to say you're welcome. Cool, so I'll just whiz through uh, what we're just doing. So the first half of the year was sorting out the official list. Um, we had to find the president, well, the new president, the new exchange officer for this term uh, from each of our local M MOs, of which there are 173. So as you can imagine, it was a rather large task. Um, so yeah, and then, we, then we also checked up on our national MOs. So we have nine of those, and as a national MO, um, you can freely accept local MOs in your country without going through GA. So we just need to keep on top of that, see um, who's accepted new MOs. Um, and we also have two supernationals, so just check in that they're okay. Um, also, we need to check that their categories are correct. So the categories are based on whether they've paid the membership for the year, um, and whether they've attended a full GA or not. 
Um, so these are the categories uh, if you're ever interested. Um, we then made the Facebook groups. So every year we make a new Facebook group for the EOs and residents. And they use this page to keep in contact with each other, um, arrange exchanges. Uh, so we try to get every single one of the EOs and residents on there. But as you can imagine, there's quite a few. And some of them Facebook, so that is a challenge. Um, yeah, it works quite well. Uh, new for this year, some of the feedback that we received from last year is that members um, sometimes don't receive all of the information uh, from Migrate Global, they're sort of like a brick wall kind of thing, um, and we wanted to improve that. So we've made a IBSA members worldwide Facebook page. So if you're not on there already, um, please join. It's quite new, but we've already got over a thousand um, members on there. And what's cool about this page is that um, you guys can post as well. So if you were traveling around a different country, you can just post on there to see um, if we have an IBSA chapter there, they're willing to like around, just meet other people and use the network that we have. Um, it's good for finding experience, um, individual hand group. Um, and yeah, anything you want, Max, if people have been using it to just uh, find um, other people's ideas about veterinary related subjects, if you have a really good, um, like, information about, oh, it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in Korea. We're going to help. Sorry, guys. I don't know which one to choose, which is lost. Okay. They're both from here. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, uh, please go join the Facebook group um, and start using it. <laughs> we also share um, all the news from uh, Global as it comes out and the chess. So, yeah, it's a good place to go and find out what's going on uh, immediately. Um, and we also do the EO bulletins, which get um, sent out once a month. And they're just a summarized version of everything that's been happening um, in the coming month opportunities, your grants, other news, and uh, stuff from our sponsors. Um, so, if they're doing any sort of um, <laughs> if they're doing any promotions or, or stuff like that. Um, what's new for this year is we started doing the members' newsletter. So uh, some of the feedback we've had is that sometimes the EO bulletin isn't shared um, in all of the MOs, maybe because the emails aren't working for, or for whatever reason. So to bridge that gap, we now make the members' newsletter, which also has all the information in it um, for the coming month. And that's posted on the, um, on the members' uh, Facebook page. So you can find it there every month. Um, which is what everything means, so scrolling through all the pages. Uh, so, we've been working on the individual exchange database, and this is an on ongoing project that we started last year. Um, some of you might not have heard of individual exchanges, uh, so each MO does group exchanges, which are quite common, so a group of students goes to another um, MO and vice versa, but an individual exchange is different. It's not actually an exchange, it's basically like an externship or a placement, however, however you want to call it. Um, so, what you do is you look on the, the set day space, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you then fill in an individual exchange application and you send this to your EO of your country, so your exchange officer. They will then sign it to confirm that you are indeed a member of IBSA um, and they will send it to the country of your choosing, uh, or multiple countries if you are looking around. Um, they will then receive the application and they might contact you to see if you need, they need more information or they'll just have a look around and see what they can find for you. Um, they will then contact you back um, saying, we found XYZ uh, placements for you. You then go on a lovely exchange uh, in another country, have a great time, learn loads, meet loads of friends, eat loads of food, um, and then report back to your own EO saying that you been on this trip um, and give them a little summary that we can use in the IBSA journal um, and just for your own uh, EOs uh, use. 
Uh, so that's how it, how it works. And uh, we have made, it's going to work. Oh, it's easy. How's
but still they were quite high, so I'm glad that they want to get to know better. And also, we can miss that uh, culture and sightseeing is included. It's I personally think it's a huge version of Congress and Symposia. They are a huge version of group exchange. It's not entirely, but partially, I'm saying. So it's great that they also have been satisfied as well, and also. It was six, of course the 60 percent of the delegates. It was first GA, and they have, even though they have the materials, the uh, the videos and the manuals, we I did it, but we sent out. Uh, they had access to it, but still they didn't really think it was easy to get up, understand. So that's why I have managed to set up a buddy system to get into advice and help what is going on, I help understand what's going on. Yeah, and it's, a, it's quite amazing that 85% still said it's interesting, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's the first time, I don't know, but uh, uh, it, uh, I also looked into the suggestions to improve J's, maybe spend less time uh, amending and debating with which <laughs> is correct. It, I think it, um, it was quite, a uh, hot issue, especially at the Krakow. <laughs> I had no offense, guys. Uh, Americans and British were fighting with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of people were complaining actually, so I wrote it as a first row, and also maybe we could uh, uh, lessen the time we take for the world calls. Some of the world calls are fun, but it's it's taking too much time, like 30 minutes or 40 minutes, so we do, will still manage to have it fun, but not that time consuming. So, yes. Yeah. But then, uh, most of the people attend the next school workshop, and I think this would have uh, satisfied the people who wanted to, uh, who came, who attended the congresses or uh, to get to get, get to. To know better, uh, I guess even international field because they uh, their workshops are great and my MOD's workshop this like it's going to be great. So please, maybe people, uh, I would like to suggest attend MOD's workshop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and about the Congress optionizes were appropriate as they brought such things, and I don't have any comments on this. And, this is the part I actually looked into it because I'm also a OC member. Um, they had a really great culture night. They had four point four. This is the highest point they had. Um, I remember a lot of people got drunk, but they <laughs> but they went into the dorm safely, which is quite important, as we mentioned at the first. So yeah, they had wonderful culture night. They managed to have such awesome event, this symposium as well, and sorry, uh, uh, I actually see some of the OCs at the crack out, but a lot of people were cons uh, complained about the meals, it was, some said it was too awful, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I wanted to, yeah, so we actually tried to work on to it. Yeah, hope you guys enjoy our demos. I know what the law is very busy here for the internet. So yeah, yeah, the law is very busy. And yeah, the schedules, they thought it was too tight and it was only, uh, it was announced on the very day, so we are managing to have it posted at, uh, at the hallway. At the elevator and outside the elevator, there will be an announcement every 11.30 p.m. So, because there is no Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, in the dorm, so you guys have to be still updated, you know. So, we are going to do that. So, room keys, every, everyone will have the keys. And for the lack of communication, that's why we have, like, more than double DLCs <laughs> to meet most of you guys. And yeah, things to remove. For the clinics, sorry, we couldn't manage it. Opening ceremony, we, uh, they only needed, they only could handle 
So a small amount of people, so it will have been a waste of time if we had done it. And yeah. I think that's the points I thought it was important to address. And I'm sorry if I didn't enjoy the As you can see, it's very important to fill in the uh, feedback evaluation form that we're going to send out after, after this uh, symposium. Um, try to give us constructive criticism. The OC worked really hard with all of the progress of the symposium. It's been said before, but it's really hard to pull something like this off. But it did a fantastic job. It was incredible. And like you saw your numbers, like they were both like all, most beautiful. So yeah, they have to <coughs> Uh, the last thing, um, we have a form um, available just to see if you guys had any opinions as to how the MOD team um, or EXPO in general uh, can help you understand things better or if you have ideas how like, we could do anything to make, I don't know, bridge the gap of knowledge or just any fun ideas that you think we should be doing, uh, please uh, fill in this form. Uh, we'll put it out there everywhere on social media. Um, yes, if you've got any ideas, please fill it in and we will try to take your uh, feedback. And to be continued, so this is the stuff we're going to be working on for the rest of our term. So contacting new MOs. You're going to see the new MOs applying uh, later on in the GAs. Uh, so we're going to work harder on um, finding new MOs. Uh, we need to still work on the official list, uh, finding those 173. It's tricky. We're going to work on certificates, so old boards can get certificates um, and official recognition from IBSA um, to show they've done work and one of the MO as well. We're going to have hardly anything sessions, so these are going to be online um, forums where any member can like, join on at certain times and ask us any questions that they have about IBSA or um, their MOs or anything like that. We have the top MO and top exchange, which is going to be awarded at Croatia. So if you are um, planning an exchange, uh, please keep a record of it and write a report. Uh, we're going to be collecting EO reports later, and that's what we base our top MO on. So yeah, plug your EO, make sure that they do it. Uh, the Korea Association, we're going to be having a meeting with the Morocco OCs, start planning the next symposium uh, and um, Congress. We're making an events manual, so a lot of the MOs have started up doing their own events, so like community congresses, national congresses, and that kind of type of things. Uh, so we're going to make a manual to ease the process a bit and like help help them come out of it. Uh, to keep on working on the digital exchange project, and we're going to collaborate with the strategic planning committee, which is going to be explained um, later in the GA. So that's going to be done. Excellent. The chair has noticed that many of you are tired and falling asleep. So, the chair will entertain a motion to go to recess for 10 minutes. Okay, so we're in recess for 10 minutes. That means you can leave. So we pop you back in whatever book. Please be back here in 10 minutes. Join an option video. After the break, after the DA, there will be dinner, but for the vegetarians, stay here just because some of the OCs will bring some foods from outside. So, vegetarians, stay. And to get to the uh, dinner cafeteria, our OC will know how to get there on Facebook. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 
Is that your hand? Yeah. 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 Because we cannot pause it, so it's still going live. How many people are watching us? Um, now, just one. Just one ah. <laughs> Oh, 
collaboration um, with organization and a sponsor. Um, with, and just to give you a brief overview of what the PD does, um, they organized the three continued. There you go. Um, it's an organization that organizes the three continuing education courses across Europe and Northern America. Um, they recruit international renowned speakers and instructors that in current up to date knowledge in the digital experience to put information into context and to give attendees useful um, practical pointers. Um, and then the majority of the VET PD courses also contain practical small group sessions to ensure the attendees get the most out of their course by getting hands-on experience. Um, so Charlotte also mentioned the VET PD raffle tickets. Um, so that's, they sponsor three raffle tickets today for the symposium in South Korea, for the Congress in Croatia, as well as the Salma Symposium. Um, and that's basically for one course attendance work. They also give discount on VP courses for IBSA students. It's like an 80% discount, so it's quite a lot. Um, and then they also have the VP student ambassador program where the winner can get a free two day course per year. Um, so we advertise the VP information on the EO bulletin and uh, Facebook page. So just keep that, yeah, uh, keep an eye on that and you'll be able to find everything that you need to know. Um, and then also, lastly, um, we also have a collaboration with student organizations such as the Big Books for Africa team that Charlotte also explained. Um, so we signed an MAU with them to collaborate on ways that will benefit both sides, um, where they go to Africa to deliver the new textbooks that we have to um, gather and to give them financial assistance. And they, in return, provide the recipe for Irish aid to try and get the most involved. Um, and then for the future potential sponsors and partners that we're looking at, um, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, FAO, um, Vets for Pets, and Independent Vet Care, just a couple of big organizations, um, cool student internship and scholarship opportunities. Um, so I'm still in the process of setting up with MOU and everything. So hopefully that will be ready to propose um, at the next Congress in Croatia. Um, so yeah, uh, just keep an eye on, on the here, Facebook the website, and we will occasionally post um, sponsorship or partner information that you can get either involved in some of the projects, if there's any internships available, um, or, or if there's just educational material that you can read through. Uh, so yeah, basically in short and sweet. Thank you. Mariel and Paul Mary coming up here. I think next is Meg, and then it will be Honey. Then Honey. Okay, Honey. And then Ellen, and then Kate Lavio. So, hello everyone. I'm Marie Bellum. The committee coordinator of Marta Origin UC. So that basically means that I have I have an able to be So that means that all the committees that we have right now and all the partners organization as well. And so the first committee is the standing committee on animal welfare which is like try to focus on improving the international standards of animal welfare through uh, increasing like <coughs> through education and uh, collaboration between different organizations and, and students. And then the next committee is the standing committee on one health, which is trying to like raise awareness to, uh, about one health and to um, highlight the role of veterinarian in public health. And yeah, the next committee is the standing committee on wellness. <laughs> and you basically try to deal with wellness. Like, try to, it's like trying to raise awareness about, uh, about 
the mental health and physical health and how we can deal with different stress and face as vet students and as the future vets as well. And then we have two different working groups. The first one is the um, this centers and the working group on alumni and they're like trying to find a way for alumni to be part of LVSA even after graduation. And I'm sorry, it's like, yeah, and the next, like, working group we'll be talking about it later, which is, like, the, the working group on policy, but right? that's another issue. And the last uh, committee is the standard committee on veterinary education, and I think the name is pretty self-explanatory. It has to do with everything related to education. So, yeah, uh, Meg, where's Meg? Could you join us and explain a bit more about the animal welfare? Hi, it's so I'm Meg from IOSA UK in Ireland, and um, thank you very much for introducing me. So I'm chair of the Standing Committee for Animal Welfare. Um, this is a quick update about what we've been doing in kind of my first um, few months as chair. I'd like to start off by saying a massive thank you to all my committee members. They've been really great at helping me out this year. Uh, only one of them can be here, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, they've been really good and really helping me out. Um, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we have done without them, so big thanks to them. Um, so we do our week in welfare, so for those of you who follow us on Facebook and Instagram, if you don't, please do. Um, we share pieces on current and topical international animal welfare issues on Facebook, oh, sorry, not being, said, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so we cover topics such as conservation and homeless dogs, and we kind of try and generate a bit of debate, so maybe share articles that you guys want to see, and just kind of give an information hub. We also have a Google form you can fill out, so if there's any animal welfare issues in your area that you want us to be aware of and want us to write about, just let us know. It's quite difficult. We really rely on you guys. It's quite, animal welfare issues differ quite a lot locally, so it's quite difficult for us, although from different regions, they're quite a diverse committee, to kind of know what's going on at a local level. Um, so that Google form is also on our Facebook page and our website. We have Animal Welfare Week coming up on the 4th and 11th of March in 2019. Loads of MOs took part last year and did some really amazing things. Um, and so we're going to say again this year, we're going to try to make it bigger and better. We really love more of you to get involved. We're going to send out a toolkit which could help have some explanations as to events and things you can do. And we're going to have a prize and like other competitions going on. And we're also looking to putting on some lectures online throughout that week on different animal welfare topics. And um, so it's really great if you take part in that. More information will be shared kind of closer to the time on Facebook and through the video bulletin. Uh, we've heard about vet, book, vet, uh, vet books for Africa, so we collaborated with them. Uh, so our uh, uh, IOSA staff member, Emmy from Cornell, she um, created different, um, she created uh, leaflets on different um, animal welfare issues in the regions that she visited. Uh, I'm not sure if Emmy is from She's sat there. <laughs> so I was going to say something. Um, yeah, so she created some local pamphlets that told all about the standing committee, what we did, covering animal welfare issues in their area and how they can get more involved. Uh, we have our ambassador network, which I know a few of you are ambassadors. Um, so that's kind of still, it was a bit slow the ground, um, but we kind of try to expand and develop from that. Um, they kind of acted as a contact between us and like local MOs, because we kind of realised last year that there was a bit of a like, bridge in knowledge, um, a gap in knowledge. Um, so ones that we have contact with, we're really responsive, so thank you for that. And if anyone's got any questions about that or if as an ambassador, then they can come contact me at any point during the symposium. We can talk about that. We've had our WBA Animal Welfare Awards. So they were kind of team up with us and gave them um, an award for any student who has been active around animal welfare in their community. Um, we haven't announced the winner yet, but that will be um, announced soon. And um, welcome to all those who applied. I'm not sure if anyone here did, but we had some really strong and really inspirational to see what I would say members have done. Uh, and he's also working on our animal welfare toolkit, which is just a toolkit on animal welfare issues aimed at veterinary students. And then in the future, we hope to also create one aimed at um, having younger generations as well that we can like, share with schools. And we have our animal welfare blog uh, that's launching very soon. We aim to share like, longer articles on animal welfare topics and invite different people to write contributing articles. Um, 
Um, so we also launched recently our animal welfare education survey. So we wanted to kind of uh, understand how the different levels of animal welfare teaching vary throughout the world and how if there's any facts and knowledge, how IRSA school can address that. Maybe we could create some educational materials and topics that weren't um, covered very much and how it ranges to different regions. Um, how we can work with kind of um, international organisations to kind of try and improve um, animal welfare internationally. And this is a very, we haven't had time to properly analyse it, um, but this is just a very brief overview um, as to um, what people have said so far. Um, so it's still open, so I can share the link on the delegate page. We appreciate if you could all, um, if you could all fill it in. Uh, we need as much uh, from all different regions. We've already had quite a few answers, but definitely from Africa, we could you know, we really want to target that area, as well as all the others, especially. So if any delegates, um, if you know anyone, can fill that out. And if you keep that, we'll share the, detail, the um, results from that. And hopefully, then moving forward, we can work on that in the next few years. Hi guys, so I'm the chair for Standing Committee of One Health. Uh, it's a pretty big committee. We have uh, 11 members, including myself. Uh, we have a publications team and project managers. Leanne is one of the project managers, and she's here. And Clara, OIE Court Ambassador Coordinators here, and Ida, their show. Um, so what we did for this term is we first had one Health Day to go to competition. So the One Health Day is on November 3rd. And on that day, we, uh, Mathil Kubasa from IBAC Press was chosen as the winner for this photo. And we also have One, one Health Day webinar series. It's on our YouTube channel, IBAC Go. So please subscribe to our channel. And it, we had, Seven, seven webinars uh, introducing uh, vulture crisis, rabies, the whole One Health concept, and we had a webinar from Frederick from Mission Rabies, so check that out too. For AMR Day, we held AMR Key Study Competition. So we had three pieces, and the participant were to submit how each of them will solve these pieces. And the winner for the AMR Tea Study Competition was Alison Oyvita from IBSA Indonesia. And we also had an AMR project with WHSA. And WHSA is a World Health Student Alliance. It consists of ISMSA, IPSF, uh, IABS. And for this project with WHSA, we uh, made infographics introducing what AMR is. And with WHSA, we also held a um, video competition, so over 100 teams participated. And the winner for this uh, video competition is actually from IBSA. It's from IBSA Latvia, so congratulate them. Um, next is publications and YouTube. So we are trying to publish veterinary public health journal three to four veterinary public health journal every term. And we just published our 13th edition on this room. It's spelled I-S-S-U-U. So please look into it. We have uh, a set of submission articles, uh, interviews with a professor from, uh, a professor in Indonesia. And we, one of my, publication team went to an international conference in Vietnam, so if you're interested in the conference, please check, check the journal and issue. And then there's a new position that we made this term as YouTube Creator. We created YouTube Creator to uh, promote what else to the late and by, so it doesn't, it won't be hard, so hard not just to, like, so that One Health will be more approachable to the public. And the first video was One Health, One Goal. So it just it just introduces a general idea of One Health. And we're trying to publish it every month. 
And the second video will be published uh, next week, probably. And yeah. Uh, next is Hawaii Ambassador. This was also launched this term. So we initially had 60 ambassadors, and now we're selecting for uh, ambassadors for the second term, but this is only for schools that don't have OIE ambassadors yet. So um, I heard that a lot of the IBSC MOs didn't know about this program, so if you guys don't have an OIE ambassador at your school yet, please share the post I made on the Facebook page. And these are the top five OIE ambassador awards. So Nabila from IBSC South Africa interviewed a professor on the test. Ivana and Bartram from IBC Cosgrove presented at OIE on their testing together. Um, and Lucia from Tech Republic held a presentation on the OIE and it posted hundred students. And Patricia from Poland created a OIE campaigns. And Kanju from South Korea published an article on window testing on a daily event, which is Korean veterinary newspaper. And yeah, this is for Go. All right, there we go. Um, Uh, then the Standing Committee on Wellness. Uh, this is our current article, uh, our current project that we're working on. The first one is short form articles to improve uh, wellness. Sorry, I thought I had a loud voice. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, so our committee members have been writing short form articles, which uh, are either published in the IDSA journal or, no, or are put in the wellness toolkit, uh, which is on the committee's website. You can look at it; it's pretty cool. Then we have our mentor mentee project, which is running right now in the pilot phase. We just sent out a survey to all mentors and mentees on how we can improve it. So we'll close it soon and then improve, uh, so try to make some improvements and send out applications for new mentors and mentees and really launch the program in Croatia. So that's really cool, I think. <coughs> then we had our wellness survey. For those of you who were in Poland, uh, you may remember us bugging you to fill it out. Apparently it worked because we had almost 500 people who filled out a long survey, so that's pretty cool, I think. And we're actually in the process of analyzing everything now, and hopefully we can publish something on that um, before the end of this term. Then, uh, get out your agendas, it's on the 22nd of April, and um, the idea is that MOs organize an event, a wellness-related event, and the one that does it the best, We'll get an awesome prize, which will be disclosed later. Uh, then we've also been trying to get a, a keep up a presence on social media. So we, we've been doing weekly Facebook posts. If you haven't liked on Facebook, please do so. Um, and we've been active on Instagram. We've been writing some articles. And we also wrote a code of conduct, which we will be presenting later in about a couple minutes. And I think that's it. Have as a veterinarian 
uh, and then a few more details, just like the working hours, um, the things you'd be doing. Um, so if you don't really know kind of the area that you're interested in, you have like a resource to check out. Then we have the vet talks and the vet ed talks. So this, these are done by either veterinarians or veterinary students. Um, and so they are just a, short, a series of short educational YouTube videos um, that, again, like you have access to. So you can definitely watch those. And if you have ideas for a new one, then get in touch and we'll walk you through to um, get that together. Um, then we have our ambassadors. So these are a network of students that help us um, promote our veterinary education resources um, and promote uh, education in general at a local level. Um, so our goal is to help find every IDC chapter. If you don't have one, then please get in touch so you can get that into the um, Then we have our workshops. Currently there's two. Um, one for responsible pet ownership and uh, one for One Health. Um, sorry, there's two for One Health. So those are basically workshops that you can put on for people in the public. Uh, for example, the, the possible pet ownership is kind of more towards elementary and secondary school students. Um, and currently we're working on a workshop for the responsible use of antimicrobials, which I think is part of the response. Yes. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And finally, we have our surveys, which basically is just helping us understand a bit more about, about, about uh, veterinary medicine the whole world. Last year, we did the new generation of learning, um, and this was presented at the kickoff meeting at SoftFest, which is an EU project to introduce soft skills into veterinary curricula. Um, so this could shape the kind of skills uh, that would be considered in the project, and thank you to everybody who participated in that survey. Um, yeah. Okay, so right now we have an ongoing, um, another ongoing session um, on the financial burden of veterinary schools. Uh, and we want to see how heavy the cost of veterinary school is on folks' wallets. <laughs> Um, so we really want everyone to fill out a survey um, and let us know how much that school costs in your country, how it affects your quality of life, uh, and what was the impact of this cost on your career path, um, or did it impact your career path. Right now we only have 100 responses, so we really, really, really need more responses. Um, we'll be posting the link on Facebook later today, hopefully. Um, and it's a, I don't know if the QR code will work on the projector, but you can try it and take it now, which would be awesome. And yeah, that's it. Stay awake, guys. We're almost there. <laughs> Well, thank you for the different chairs and the committee members who just presented their work. And I'm going to present the work of the working group on the night uh, instead of Nina, who unfortunately couldn't make it, but we do have Brian in here, one of the committee members. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, aim of, uh, the goal of this like working group is to bring like I say, uh, alumni closer to our current members uh, by creating a strong alumni database and work on our strategic planning that will determine the benefits of having an alumni program uh, as well as cater the needs of a, such a committee. Um, and of course, organize events for alumni for them to be able to meet. So the project that they have been working on this year is like organizing an alumni event in the US. Brian will really try to do this. It looked really cool, but unfortunately, we will not be able to do it because the applicants couldn't have visas for US. Thank you, Brian, though, for really nice. And uh, we, they will be proposing some bylaw amendments like later on on the GA. We will be discussing those. And Nina is working on setting up a software that, the database for the, for the alumni members. And yeah, 
the application for the online will be open hopefully close after the the symposium. And yeah, and one of the committee members, uh, Leonie from Germany, who's not really here, he's she's trying, like she's beginning to try to organize an online event in Europe, hopefully in spring. And yeah, that's it for Alina. The last slide is about the working group and policies. Uh, for those who've been in Poland, they know that once we open the nomination for the chair, we didn't really get any application. And after discussing this with among EXCO and hearing the recommendation from Trust, we decided not to open application during this GA either. We're instead uh, on working on the process of re constructing this working group and we will be sharing some of the information in Croatia. And that's it for me. Thank you guys. And I would really, really love to uh, thank the chairs for the amazing work that we've been doing. And yeah, I think committees are like a really huge part of what I is doing and thank you again for being here. Thank you, Anna. Hi. Uh, we are the Speed Planning Committee. And Sophia, for those of you who don't know what the Speed Planning Committee is, uh, so the SPC was founded during the 62nd Congress in Utrecht. Do you really want to like a long term vision for either saying how we could um, plan to bring it forward in the future, to engage more with our members and make it really <coughs> beneficial? Uh, to, and also adapt to the change of needs by international members. Um, so we work on, uh, alongside our officials and alumni and ask for input from all the member organisations who want to try to best represent the needs of all. Uh, so they created an abstract 10 year plan and a more concrete short term 5 year plan. The current 5 year plan lasts until mid 2019, so around the Congress uh, in Croatia. So we are currently in the process of creating a new 5 year plan from mid 2019 to mid 2024. Uh, so we've got quite a diverse background of members. We wanted people who have been involved in more local areas. We've got people who are now in trust, who people who are previously in Mexico, people who are currently um, officials, and uh, we're also from all over the world. That's the thing. Thank you, Linda. Unfortunately, this couldn't be here. And it's a So we decided to break our speed uh, planning down into subsections, which we thought should be focused areas. The ones involved are the ones that we have worked the most on and think are the most important um, at current time, but we have discussed all of these. It might be worth noticing the alumni network is on here, but we agreed um, that we might, we're probably going to leave that out the Steve Clanton now because it's kind of still starting up, so we want Nina to kind of get it going, and then in a, we're going to have it mentioned, but we're not going to have any goals and strategies for that right now. We're kind of going to let her develop that and see what she wants to do with it and work with her at a later point to create a senior department for the alumni network. So strict to summary, um, so we're going to look into um, regional chapters and um, so having kind of national, one national MO with different regional chapters. Also, if you've seen today, MOD has a lot of work, especially in terms of like contacting local and national MOs and managing people from different regions. So we are potentially looking to the idea of forming an MOD team with different um, people who are in charge of managing different regions and kind of decide how many people we have per region depending on how many MOs there are. So for example, we have um, lots in Europe and lots in other areas. Um, which we have discussed in the past, and um, we're just bearing in mind moving forward. Um, uh, we're also looking at the EXCO and secretary positions and roles to try and kind of set responsibility and make sure it's not too much on one person. So we've, we've asked the EXCO to give their opinions on that, 
and we're currently working with them to see how we can best uh, do this. Uh, but overall, we just want to continue to make sure that RUSA is available to all Wetland students around the world and that we're a transparent organisation. Um, I've also been working with Lara on the Standing Committee Summary. Um, so we really want the committee specific goals um, and we also have some common goals for all the committees such as forming partnerships and collaborations with organisations, creating and utilising the ambassador network to better reach out to local member organisations. We want to continue our research possibility holding community specific events such as the in conference which is held in Munich which was very successful. Uh, we will better like, try and improve our application in international veterinary events from a committee point of view, especially at events that are specifically related to committee objectives, and improve the funding and balance of the committees. Uh, we're also considering the potential for new committees as and when we feel um, that they are required. And we're looking to create a template for a yearly working plan for each committee, just so um, it's just make it easier for the chair to manage and so they know where they're going. Expo can look at that and we can formulate that together to make sure that we're all on board with the plan for the year. Some other part of the strategic planning committee that uh, we were taking a look at our Congress and Symposium. Um, we want to improve and the main areas to improve what we have found as our development that follows. Um, first of all, maintaining collaboration between uh, ethical and uh, organizing committee uh, because we are now trying to figure out what can we do as IBSA to help organizing committees to make them better congress and symposia. Um, also, a uh, selection criteria. Uh, we want to make sure so the delegates that are chosen uh, to take part in those events are um, some of them uh, very experienced members uh, with uh, a big knowledge about IBSA and the other part uh, new members who uh, can be active and learn from the experienced one and also uh, so that active uh, people, uh, for example, um, the committee members can uh, take part in those events. Uh, we want to uh, give a clear template or a rules uh, about how to accept members for the conversation symposium because uh, that we found as an issue. Uh, we also look up at uh, finances and fees. Uh, we want to make uh, it easier for the delegates to pay the fees, but also uh, try to find a way how IBSA could uh, support uh, organizing community uh, financially. Uh, also, education. We would like to uh, raise up the educational value of um, Congress and symposium. Uh, our ideas for it um, was um, giving a um, little more time uh, during the events for uh, the committees. Um, and also letting them make some workshops. And we also thought about using uh, some event, uh, which is a pre-congress or pre-symposium, an event uh, that would include workshops, lectures, uh, that would focus on global health, veterinary topics like AMR, animal welfare, climate change, and things that uh, delegates would be interested in, but we are still um, thinking if there would be uh, delegates who would be interested in some kind of event like this, and we will see what we will come up with in the future. And for the MO involvement, uh, we would like to make sure that GAs are understandable for all the delegates and uh, that all of you are uh, involved and active in the GA and we are thinking what to do, um, how to make you more, even more involved during the GAs. Uh, but also we would like to help uh, less active animals and uh, the belonging countries to participate in the events as it is not always uh, very much possible for them, and of course, uh, motivate them also to organize such events, um, next conference and symposium. Uh, also, we look at, at alumni and how we can get them involved in conference and symposia, how they can uh, share their experience during the event and help our students with their knowledge. And um, our next idea was also a potential for an outside company to assist in organization of uh, those events. But we are still thinking if this will be possible and getting all the necessary inputs. And we have also the finances uh, for those areas. Uh, and uh, for that area, um, we are uh, now, uh, first of all, looking at the current. Uh, fee payments uh, for all the MOs. 
Uh, we are comparing it to uh, the systems uh, that other veterinary world associations are having, and uh, we are trying to um, modify it possibly and discussing if there is a better way of doing it. Uh, we would like to improve uh, ease of money, uh, ease of movement of money in the association, and also improve the usage of our international bank accounts, for example, the um, American bank, bank account that we are having, and set ex and exchange rates at the beginning of the term of the executive committee. We would um, like to have a better visibility of amounts of money on our uh, accounts as uh, we have um, we have uh, the development fund, we have CF fund, scholarship fund, member fee fund, and membership fee fund, and uh, we would like to make it clear um, and uh, manage this money in a proper way. Uh, we also uh, discuss uh, creating a reserve fund and some saving accounts for the future of IBSA. Uh, again, we would like to evaluate uh, MOPs and payments of it. And of course, I think that's the main point, um, analyze the budget of uh, previous years and what the money was used for and uh, how can we uh, utilize more efficiently to make the IBSA better for the future. All right, so the strategy plan is uh, now created by the strategy planning committee, which is cooperating with uh, the executive committee, with all the officials and alumni. But most of all, we really would like it to be a voice of local members and MOs, uh, and uh, we would like it uh, to both be your needs, as I may say, is an uh, association for all of us. And uh, that's why uh, they have been created an MO survey. In this survey, um, that have been sent to all the MOs, to all your official email guys, so please check the email website so we can, we can uh, check the link and fill out the survey. Um, we would like to get one survey per each MO, uh, so we can discuss with your MO members all the issues that you are having, all the problems, all the ideas uh, that you think I guess a golf global could um, improve. Um, everything that you would like to tell us and uh, let's know about it so please fill out the MO survey and uh, if you have any questions or anything about all the strategy planning committee or MO survey please uh, send an email questions that you're having and uh, to sum up uh, a little bit the strategy plan that the timeline I will plan what we uh, want to do with in the future. Uh, we are um, we want to create a draft strategy plan first, uh, when we get uh, input from you guys and also uh, from all the official people we are working with and uh, send it to everybody before the Congress in Croatia to get more comments and more inputs on it. And during the GA in Croatia, hopefully it will be approved and amended on the GAs. And then the strategy planning committee will be dissolved until uh, Congress in 2023 when the five years will pass because it's five year plan. And then new strategy planning committee will have to be created. Thank you so much for all your attention. And if you have any questions about it, find, feel free to find Mike or me and just ask us about it or send an email, message, anything you like. Thank you.
with Vamos. Arvid, if you would like to stand up. So he would like uh, to be able to speak to you if you want to talk about wellness. He has a lot of experience in that area. So uh, yeah, feel free to speak to him. Then the code of conduct. Um, in Poland, as uh, EXCO asked the wellness committee to make a code of conduct privately set, which is basically a set of guidelines you should adhere to at the event. So this is basically how you should uh, be behaving here. Um, well, first we have the mission statement of IPSA. Um, I'm not going to repeat it all out. Then um, what the, we want with the code of conduct. So what we want with our members, which is to create a comfortable, positive, and safe environment and atmosphere for all participants of every cultural background, to be in accordance with the principles and values of IPSA, and to achieve the best outcomes for all events organized by IPSA and its subsidiaries, for example, conferences, symposia, and exchanges, which are at right now. Yes. Um, and yeah. So basically, read through it. Um, make sure you're there to it. And if you feel like one of these things is um, being broken, like one of these rules is being broken, you can come to uh, one of the officials. You can uh, recognize that by a very fancy and you can also send an email to code of conduct at ipsa.org. Um, and yeah, it's basically a set of pretty logical rules, I think. Try to be on time, it makes everything easier for OC and for us to keep everything running smoothly. Um, don't sleep in GA like everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, and also, uh, one that I think is also quite important: uh, uh, do not post uh, publicly any pictures of people that they may not want on the internet. So, like, we have a closed Facebook group that's fine, but don't post anything publicly that may other people may not want. Yeah, just ask them if it's okay to do so. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions or comments about this at this time? Very none, I'm going to give it back to you, Harry. <laughs> okay, if you guys can stay awake for like four more minutes, we're going to be done early for the day, okay, so just work out. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mata, would you like to present on executive sessions, or do you want me to do it? I think that would be the first one. Okay, Mata, IBSA president, will now present on executive sessions. <laughs> um, okay, so executive sessions are basically an ESCO meeting is an executive session. Um, observers can only attend an ESCO approves their attendance. So, in other words, it's mostly just um, the executive committee that attends, um, and then any observers that have been approved by the executive committee. Um, so then at the following time, we're proposing the excellent report back to the GA that a second session has taken place. Um, and any, any email or individual support member may then request more information after that time. Um, so basically, we've only had one executive session since um, Congress in Poland. Are there any questions? Being none? Yeah? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, the chair will entertain a motion to go into recess until General Assembly meeting two. Ooh.
You have to raise your hand and be called on by the chair. Caleb. Caleb Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Are there any objections to going into recess? Very none. We're in recess. Don't move, though. Okay, also, quick message from me as chair. Um, no, most of you haven't been in GA before, so it's fine, but while we're in GA, you actually aren't allowed to just leave the room and go do whatever you want and come back, including going to the bathroom. So if you think I left it too long and you guys need a recess to go to the bathroom and stuff, that's what point of privilege is for. So you should say, point of privilege, we need a recess, we need a break. So don't just leave. Um, there's a lot of you that are actually representing whole countries by yourself, or like only two of you. So if you leave, your country is gone. <laughs> so please don't do that. Um, also, try not to sleep, but I know you're going to. So. <laughs> There's no one watching. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we Okay, um, so first of all, um, I'm just going to ask if OC has any announcements um, that they come up. And then um, after OC has made announcements, please don't move. And can I ask all the officials to go to their buddy countries now for um, about 15 minutes and just talk to them. And um, if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask. Um, yeah, so if you ask them, and as soon as you've asked all the questions, then um, you can go. So, OC, do you have any announcements? Okay, just be quiet and listen to OC, please. Hey everyone, um, <clears throat> we have dinner at 5.30, we are leaving from the hall at 5, so the OCs will guide you to the cafeteria, it's quite a way, so I have posted the how to get there on Facebook, but you probably want to go with the OCs, so we'll depart at 5, and yes, and then We'll come back at until seven. So because we have the OIE and EXCO workshop, and we're going to post the post the lecture rooms on the pillar right outside of the entrance. And then after the workshops, we're going straight to straight for the optional pub. <laughs> Yeah, do you have any questions? No. Change. Not really. No. But if if you think you need like warm clothes, do you think you have to go to the dormitory? Yeah, we have to. We like to Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll figure that out and I'll make an announcement. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Ryan just stop it. Uh, if you guys are only using Google Map, try downloading Naver Map. It's N A V E R. Or you could use Kakao Map. It's K A L K A. So, um, because Google Map isn't that useful in Korea. And uh, Koreans are usually use Naver Map or Kakao Map. So if you're having trouble using Google Map, we recommend you download yeah, other apps. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys, sorry, it took a few more minutes. Please, please just pay attention still. Um, so, just for tonight, after dinner, we will have the EXCO workshops. And I know there are many new people who haven't been to the EXCO workshops before. Um, so, I just want to give a brief description of what they are. Um, please try to attend some of them because it's really interesting um, and you might learn something. 
So um, meet back here, then we will disperse from here, I'm guessing. No, oh no, this, the, they're going to post the lecture rules on the, um, on the Facebook page. But if you're unsure, I think meet here and then the OEC can show you where to go. Um, but basically the EXCO workshops are workshops presented by IDSA officials. Um, on their specific positions. So, um, especially if you're holding a position within your member organization um, on your local board. board. Um, and then the, also the OAE workshops will take place. There will be two workshops directly after each other. If you are at all interested in, um, in the OAE or in OAE ambassador program, I suggest you go to the OAE workshops, but we're going to probably work on a first come first serve basis. So just try to like have an idea of which workshops you want to go to before you come back. Um, so you kind of know what you want to do. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if the officials want me to call out who's doing workshops now or maybe later. I don't know who's doing there are five workshops, I believe. It should be OAE, One Health, Wellness, Animal Welfare, and something. OAD. Okay, member organization. OAE, One Health, Wellness, Animal Welfare, member organization. And you need to be on time or you will miss it. You don't want that. Okay. You have like 40 minutes of free time before dinner. Oh, but we're doing a buddy system apparently for 15 minutes. Then you have 20 minutes of free time. Got another hour for Okay, sorry guys. Um... Going back to the dormitory, after the workshop, you go to the dormitory, we will have the OCs at the first floor lobby at 9.15 for those who've gone to the uh, dormitory yeah, to take you to the optional pub. 9.15. The workshop ends at 8.30. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to your